is risen today. Hallelujah. With praise eternal as God's love, we join together on this most holy and joyful of days, proclaiming together, joining in at home, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us celebrate and worship God on this happy morning. We come to marvel at the great gift of resurrection love the sacred name of God echoing throughout the eons, throughout the whole universe, in the proclamations of the resurrected Christ. The spirit of justice, forgiveness, transformation, and new life resounds all around us. May we be so moved to embody the spirit in our words and our deeds. Friends, wherever you are in the world, whatever time it is, whatever brought you here, you are welcome to join us in this virtual sacred space as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Today we will continue to sing more joyful songs. We will hear scripture, we'll reflect and we'll pray, and we will bless ourselves as we leave this place. Friends, let's continue our worship. prepare our hearts and our minds to hear our most sacred story. 
the one that calls us to be gathered here today. Our gospel lesson comes from the book of Matthew and comes to us all the way from Churchill Falls, Labrador, shared with us by my dad, Terry Burry. Happy Easter from Churchill Falls, Labrador. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. Jesus has risen. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Dad. I love and miss you so much. I wish we were able to spend Easter together. Now, after the Sabbath, it's the first day of the week, and we hear that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary go to the tomb where Jesus' body lay. The other Mary is likely not Mary, the mother of Jesus. It's probably another follower of Jesus with the same name. Now, Matthew's gospel is written in rather dramatic fashion, generally. If you read through the gospel from beginning to end, you'll find a number of suddenlies. Suddenly, a furious storm came. Suddenly, a bright cloud overshadowed them. In our scripture reading today, you might have caught one. Oddly, there isn't one right where it sounds like there should be a suddenly because they arrive to look at the tomb and there's a violent earthquake as an angel of the Lord came and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Needless to say, the quiet graveside visit escalated quickly. Now what we know about angels in the Bible is that they don't appear to be like the angels that are on TV, that are beautiful adult or children, humans with wings, long flowing hair, that look like they arrived from Sweden. In the Bible, angels are terrifying. In this story, we're told that the angel's appearance was like lightning. What does that even mean, like lightning? It doesn't evoke a sense of peaceful, tranquil energy that we so often associate with angels. Angels are apparently so terrifying that almost every time they show up to humanity in the Bible, they say those familiar words that are repeated today. Don't be afraid. Which, I admit, in this context, I can't help but comparing to telling a very upset person to calm down since never in the history of calm down has anyone ever calmed down by being told to calm down. At the same time, the don't be afraid isn't a command. It's not a scolding. It's more of a, this is scary and it's understandable that you're scared, but you don't need to be kind of don't be afraid. In any case, the guards present are so frightened, they shake, and we are told they become like dead men. Which means, what? Frozen in fear? Unconscious? Paralyzed? Unresponsive, in any case. The women, on the other hand, are told, don't be afraid, 
I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He's risen, just like he predicted he would be. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the rest of the disciples. He's risen from the dead and is going ahead of you and will meet you all back home in Galilee. Then we hear this. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, to tell the disciples. Afraid yet filled with joy. Then on the way, suddenly, Jesus appears to them and the two Marys fall to his feet and they're told again the same message as before, don't be afraid. Go on and tell the rest of my friends that I'm gonna meet everybody back home in Galilee. And here we have it again, that same sense of, it's understandable that you're scared, but you don't need to be, go tell the good news. Here in this story of resurrection, we have two sets of characters in contrast. We have the guards at the tomb responding as though they are dead men to the shocking, dramatic change that's taken place. This huge upheaval that's happened in their midst. While the women respond, afraid, yet filled with joy. And so they go meeting Jesus on the way. Arguably, the guards react. The women respond. Both are afraid. But the women are, what? Braver? I mean, I guess. But I'm not convinced that the opposite of fear is bravery or courage necessarily. I wholeheartedly admit that while I'd like to wave my girl power flag and join the ranks of these women responding in the face of the unknown, in the face of fear, maybe even danger, I know what it's like to be afraid. Maybe you do too. I've been afraid at different moments throughout my life. And I've been afraid particularly often over the past year. Facing the unknown, facing isolation, facing a very real danger. Maybe I'm not alone in this. Maybe you know what it's like to be afraid too. The response of the two Marys reminds me actually of a passage um, that Nadia Boltz Weber reflected on, different from this one that I heard quite some time ago, and it has stuck with me ever since, mostly throughout this pandemic. The passage is this, and it comes from Luke's Gospel. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. And Jesus replied, go tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow because on the third day, I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, just for reference in this passage, people have come to warn Jesus that Herod wanted to kill him. And at this point in the story, again for reference, Herod had already imprisoned and beheaded Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist. So Herod's presence, Herod's threat, represents very real, actual 
danger. And Jesus responds, tell that guy with his fragile bully ego that I'm busy. Like, whew, that's hardcore. Jesus is very cool in this passage. Jesus here is the embodiment of don't be afraid. But to be honest, this itself is unlikely to take away anyone else's fear. Reading this passage did not quell my fears over the past year. Because let's be honest, we are never going to be just like Jesus. So maybe our hope lies in the rest of what he says, where he refers to Herod as a fox and himself and God as a mother hen, a wonderful image of God that could be really important to us right now. Because although realistically, a mother hen God cannot protect us from Herod. A mother hen God cannot fight off all danger. A mother hen God cannot keep bad things from happening to us. A mother hen God does not keep danger from being danger. A mother hen cannot even protect her chicks from a determined fox. So maybe it's not safety that keeps us from being afraid. Maybe it's love. A mother hen of a god doesn't keep foxes from being dangerous. Instead, Nadia Bowles Weber suggests that a mother hen god keeps foxes from being what determines how we experience the unbelievably beautiful gift of being alive. God, the mother hen, gathers all of her downy feathered little vulnerable ones under God's protective wings so that we know where we belong and we know who we are and we know where to find comfort. I absolutely love this image she gives. And I love it because it tells us that faith in God does not mean safety. Boxes exist. Danger is real. Jesus was crucified and global pandemics happen. The guards allowed their fear to consume them, to act as dead among the living, even in the face of resurrection. While the Marys, in the face of the impossibility of the resurrection of Christ from the grave, allow themselves that understandable sense of fear while also holding joy. They respond in haste to bear witness to the other friends of Jesus, the good news that the foxes of the world do not have the final say. The women respond in their mixed up feelings of fear and joy because of their love. It's almost as though, even in their human frailty and grief and despair, that they are convinced that neither life nor death nor angels nor demons nor the present nor the future nor any powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate them from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May we too be convinced that our mother hen of a God holds us under her feathery wings, giving our hearts enough shelter that they might grow with the defiant hope of the possibility of resurrection. Friends, even when we are fearful, may we remember 
to respond in love. For we are the people of the resurrection. And for that, we will praise God for this promise. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Amen. join our hearts and our minds in prayer. Let us pray. We thank you, living God, for the glorious message that you bring. Love out of fear, resurrection out of defeat, new life out of death. Hear us as we pray. You breathe life into dry bones. You give living water so that new life blossoms. You urge flowers to push their way through winter-hardened soil. We bring before you the dead and dried-out places in our lives, that through your touch we may discover newness of life. Bless all people of faith that your vision of justice and peace might be embraced by all. Holy One, sometimes we cling to forgotten dreams, lapsed intentions, hardened resentments, and grief. We make the choice to hand these over to you. We bring before you the places in our lives and in our world where despair reigns unchallenged. Point us toward actions, however small, which lead to a more hopeful future for ourselves and for our world. Gracious God, 
Out of the many deaths that we face in life, you bring the gift of resurrection and the promise of new life. Bless those in our midst who are suffering in any way, whom we now name in the silence of our hearts. Gracious God, we thank you that you walk beside us as we journey through life. Because you are with us, we accept each new day with its joys and sorrows as a gift. Because you are with us, we gain courage to meet the challenge of the day, choosing life and not death as we move through time. As you raised Jesus from the dead, raise us to new life day by day. We pray in Jesus' name, those ancient words he taught us to pray to you, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Thank you so much for joining us for worship today on this holiest of days, this Resurrection Sunday. May we all leave this place with joyful hallelujahs on our lips, for he is risen indeed. And may the peace of our risen Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into love's doors. Go in peace to love and serve the risen Christ. Amen.